Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us to this session. We're asking, Lord, that you will speak your word to every heart and prepare us, Lord, more and more until everyone is ready whenever the Lord will come. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. Thank you very much. You can sit down. We're reading from First Thessalonians chapter 5. And I'm reading from verse 1. We're looking at the message. Watchfulness while others sleep. The world at large is sleeping. They are unconscious. They do not know the signs of the times. While the world is asleep, the church must be awake, and the church must be watching. And when we talk about the church, there is the visible church. Jesus spoke about that visible church, like the net that is cast into the sea. And gathers a lot of fish. And then as he brings everything to shore. He examines everything. And the bad ones were cast back into the sea. And the good ones preserved for the fisherman. That net draws all the fish. Good and bad. That's the visible church. But the church within the larger church, that's the invisible church, that's the real body of Christ. Those are the people that know that Christ died for them. And they're living in expectancy of the coming of the Lord. That church is awake, but the larger church is asleep. Watchfulness while others sleep. People in the same congregation. There are those in the same congregation. And sometimes we refuse or we neglect to make the difference. The congregation is an open assembly that brings in quite a lot of people. And some of those in the congregation some of them are awake some of them are sleeping the retreat like this brings together many many people from different areas of life some are real genuine Christians others are just retreat attendants they increase the crowd they might be sleeping but some are watching and they are awake. Watchfulness. You'll decide it for yourself. Which group, which assembly, which part you belong to. Those who are watching or those who are sleeping. But this we know. A part is awake. The other part is asleep. And with that understanding in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 1, But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety. Then sudden destruction comes upon them as travail upon a woman or child, and they shall not escape. There are people, writers and authors. There are people, supposed teachers and preachers that tell us that before the Lord comes, there will be a mighty worldwide revival that will sweep everybody 
into the kingdom. And then Christ will come. Because the church, Christ is coming for. According to them, it's not a small church. Because Christ is coming for a revived church. And almost the whole world will be swept into that church before he comes. Jesus Christ himself gives them the lie. He tells them that telling lies were read it over and over. As the days of Noah were, is a minority that got in. As the days of Lot were, is a minority that went in. And when somebody asked, are there few that shall be saved? And Jesus answered and said, strive to enter in. Because many will try to enter in, they will not be able. That's why the word of God is reminding us, when they shall say, those writers, those authors, those teachers, those preachers, those false prophets, when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as travail upon a woman or child, and they shall not escape. But she, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all children of light and children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep. That's it. Let's watch while others sleep. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others. But let us watch and be sober. Watch while others sleep. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that be drunken, are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet the hope of salvation. For God has not appointed us believers to us, but to obtain salvation, the final salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with Him. You'll find that word sleep in many, in different verses of that passage I have read to you now. Look at verse 7. That talks about natural sleep. We we'll sleep in the night. We we'll walk during the day. And when the body is fatigued and weary and tired, we need sleep. That's natural sleep. Verse 7. But they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that be drunken, they go to their night clubs and they are drunken in the night. There is natural sleep. That's another kind of sleep. You're still alive. You're still awake. We're not talking of night. We're not talking of physical weariness. We're talking of something spiritual. You are not conscious of the signs of the times. You are not conscious of many things happening around you. The coming of the Lord is very near, imminent. You are not even thinking about it. You carry on life, perceive life is forever. You might be dying tomorrow. You are not conscious. You do not understand that your time on earth is short. Spiritual sleeping, verse 6. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others. It says, don't be, don't be that unconscious. Be very conscious about things around you. And be conscious that what is going to happen will happen. If you are not ready, it will take you unawares. Let us not sleep. Let's be awake. Let's listen to the Spirit. Let's know what the Lord is saying. 
Let's see the signs the Lord is showing us at this time. Let us not sleep. That's talking about spiritual sleeping. There's another one. That's perpetual sleep. And David slept with his fathers. And Isaac slept with his fathers. And Jeroboam slept and was gathered together with his fathers. That's perpetual sleep. That's the sleep people take and they are gone. They are not to come back. And that's why the Bible talks about those who are asleep. They slept in Christ. That means they died. Look at verse 10. Who died for us. Talking about Christ. That whether we wake or sleep. Whether we wake or sleep. We should live together with him. It says if we die in the Lord. We we'll sleep. We will be with him. If we are awake. And it comes in the rapture. We are awake and we go with him. Whether we are among the people. That will die before the Lord comes. We will sleep in Christ. When he comes, the dead in Christ shall rise first. And then all we are among the people that will still be awake. And still be alive. When he comes, we shall be caught up together with him in the clouds. And so he's talking about those who sleep perpetually. One, natural sleep. Two, spiritual sleep. Three, Perpetual sleep in death. Come back to verse 1. The old passage is talking about the coming of the Lord. But of the times and the season, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For ye yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. It's talking about the coming of the Lord. And he said, because of the certainty, because of the prophecy, and because of the assurance we have that Christ is coming. Don't sleep. Be awake. Watch. So that day will not come upon you unawares. Because it's going to come upon the people of the world Unawares, unprepared, they will not even be aware of what was, what is happening. That's why the Lord is calling you and I, every one of us, to watchfulness. Watchfulness while others sleep. Three things we're going to talk about. Number one, warriors lost through carnal, sinful sleep. Warriors wrestle not. Against flesh and blood. We wrestle against principalities and powers. We are soldiers of Christ. Endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. We are warriors. And there are warriors who have been lost. Because of carnal sinful sleep. Number two. Warning against condemned selfish sleep. Warning against condemned selfish sleep. You are appointed to be a watchman. You are appointed and the security of a whole group of people depends on you. And the Lord has given you the grace as well as the responsibility. But you, come, you become selfish thinking about yourself. A little tiredness, a little weariness, a little fatigue. You do not consider the responsibility the Lord has given you. And because of that selfishness, which is condemned by the Lord, you go to sleep. And then something happens, something negative, something destructive, something that draws people away from the kingdom. Happens, and many of the people you want to watch over, they are lost. Warning against condemned selfish sleep. Number three, watchfulness against careless spiritual sleep. 
Just be careless. You're not doing the right thing at the right time. You become unconscious. You forget yourself. You leave the seed. There is nothing to be done for the day. Or for the week. Or for the year. You live from day to day. You are spiritually asleep. You are walking about. But you do not even know what you are stumbling at. It says, watch against careless spiritual sleep. One by one. Number one. Warriors lost through carnal sinful sleep. Now we know that we're warriors. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. Reading from verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. We're fighting. We're wrestling. We're contending. And if you say you don't want to fight, your enemy is the devil. You're not fighting flesh and blood. You're fighting principalities and powers. They are always awake. They are always at each. They are always fighting. They are always looking for people they will devour. And so, if you sleep, we're going to lose you as a warrior from the army of the Lord. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Those are the personalities we are fighting against. Those are the people and those are the systems we are fighting against. They say, wherefore in verse 13, take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, the day of battle. And the way of, the day of conflict and the day of contention and the day when you ought to put on the armor in that evil day and fight to conquer and having done all to stand, stand therefore. Having your loins got about for truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace above all. Above all, taking the shield of faith. You need that yourself personally. The faith of another person will not be enough for you. The faith of the prayer warriors will not be enough for you. The faith of your pastors will not be enough for you. Yourself. You have, you have to have personal faith before you can be saved. You need to have personal faith before you can be sanctified. And you need to have personal faith before you are baptized and immersed in the Holy Ghost. You need that personal faith before you can overcome the tempter. You need that personal faith before you can be an overcomer, a conqueror more than a conqueror. Above all, taking the shield of faith. Wherewith ye shall be able personally to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Look up here. See if you can understand what I'm going to say. If somebody is always manifesting faith for you, and he says, don't worry, I'm there for you, is doing you more harm than good. It doesn't allow you to know the promises of God by yourself. It doesn't allow you to go to the throne of grace by yourself. It does not allow you to ever feel the heat of the day. It says, I'm always there. He puts you in a glass house. And he says, just stay there. I'll do the fasting for you. I'll do the praying for you. I'll do the energetic thing for you. I'll be developing my own spiritual muscle. You stay weak. I'm there for you. It does you more harm than good. Because the temptations that come your way, and the difficulties that will come your way, and the things that will, the devil will throw at you to get you down, that man, that woman, that spare warrior will not be able to help you. 
You need that personal faith to stand. And you need to put on the armor of the Lord for yourself to stand above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation. Nobody will do that for you. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. You know, all the word of God. That another person may know will not help you at the time you come to the day of battle. The one you read for yourself, the one you hear for yourself, the one you believe for yourself, the one you store inside for yourself. That's what help, what will help you. The power in that world that is stored inside you. That's what will help you. And then it goes on to say. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching, warrior and watching, soldier of Christ and watching, believer and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Second Timothy chapter 2. In Second Timothy chapter 2. Here I'm reading from verse 3. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. That's a believer right there. That's you if you're a believer right there. That you will endure hardness. If somebody else is always enduring for you. And is always shielding you. Always protecting you and always by your side, and before anything comes, it's already in front of you. And you do not understand how to personally overcome by yourself the fellow that is overprotective, that will not allow you to pray by yourself, read by yourself, understand by yourself, resist the devil by yourself. Is hurting you, is weakening you, but thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that worries entangles himself with the affairs of this life. Warrior, have you heard? You're a warrior, you're a soldier, and you're a militant person for the kingdom of God. And no man that worries entangles himself with the affairs of this life. That he be pleased him who has chosen him to be a soldier. Chosen him to be a warrior. And if a man also strive for masteries. Yet he see not crowned except he strive lawfully. Well then, we're soldiers. We're warriors. And we need to understand that we must be watching. Now, warriors that sleep. And those warriors that sleep, they get into danger. And eventually, they are lost. I'm coming to Judges, chapter 16. Warriors lost through carnal, sinful sleep. In Judges chapter 16, here we're reading from verse 19. You know the story? I'll just read these two verses for you to recollect what happened to this great warrior. By the way, this was not an ordinary man. He was number one in the land among the children of Israel at this time. He was the judge of the land. This wasn't like uh, a new convert. This wasn't like a person that was ignorant of the fact that the Philistines were enemies. Enemies of the nation. Enemies of this man. He knew that these people were after him. And yet he went in there. Look at verse 19, chapter 16 of Judges. And she made him sleep. That's carnal. And she made him sleep, that's sensual. And she made him sleep, 
That's sinful. And she made him sleep. That's sensuous. And she, Delilah, made him sleep upon her knees. Warrior, what are you doing there? Soldier, what are you doing there? Believer, what are you doing there? Where are you sleeping? Natural sleep. That leads to spiritual sleep. And you forget yourself. And you are in the enemy's territory. And the devil has been watching for such a time like this. Ah yes, you know, all in the time. Time of festivities. Time when everybody forgets how to be serious. How to be sober. How to be sober minded. It's a time of carelessness. It's a time of carnality. It's a time of let go the reins. Let go the restraint. Let go all the restriction. At least some people think there must be a day when you should be on vacation. Vacation from Bible reading. Vacation from Bible devotion. Vacation from prayer. Vacation from seriousness. Vacation from watchfulness. They say there must be a time. You cannot be, you know, all the time serious. All the time sober. All the time thinking about heaven. All the time. You be a fanatical person. If you're like that, that's what they say. They say there must be a time when you take vacation. And the judge, something took vacation. And he felt he left his business. He left his responsibility in the land of Israel. And he went to the territory of the Philistines and he was on vacation. Samson, what are you doing here? You know, pastor, there are times when we're just tired. And we need to relax. And we need to rest when your nerves are tensed up. When you're like string that we're pulling, and it's like, you know, you might snap, you might break. And before you get to that breaking point, just to sip a little wine. And just to relax a little. And just to watch things, not because we want to watch them, but just to relax. And just to rest a little bit. It's some vacation. You cannot be fighting every day, that's what they say. You cannot be contending for the faith every day, that's what they say. You cannot be on the spot every day and be doing it every time, that's what they say. That's what happened to this man. And she made him sleep upon her knees and she called for a man. And she caused him to shave off the seven locks of his head. What's this? Look up here. You, you men, you go to shave your head, bap your head. You're used to that now. We're talking about a man that had never visited a barber's shop. He's never shaven those locks of the head. Since he was born and is now an adult and he has never experienced this and yet as strange as the experience was something he had never done he did not even feel the touch of whatever they used clippers, scissors, razor, whatever they used he didn't even feel it he was really asleep. The devil must have put that man to sleep. The Philistines must have done something that the man, he was in the wrong place. And no wonder, look at the kind of sleep. And then after they shaved off the head, she began to afflict him. I thought he was looking for pleasure. Delilah, what are you doing? It's not right. Delilah, what are you doing? This is not fear. This man came for pleasure. Delilah, this is not proper. This is terrible. The man came for vacation. He came for pleasure. 
he came for relaxation. And this Delilah began to afflict him. And his strength went from him. The warrior that was lost through canal sleeping. In verse 20. And she said, The Philistines be upon thee, Samson. Is that not mockery? You are strong, aren't you? Get up now. Fight the Philistines. Hey, Delilah, the Philistines were of the same tribe, the same country, the same culture. With Delilah, she was actually an agent. You don't know when an agent can come to you. We're living in a dangerous world. We're living in a Satan-infested world. We're living in a delicate, dangerous community. This land, the world in which we're living, an agent can be sent to you. And this was an agent. And now she came out in her true colors. She knew how not to give herself she knew how to go so far and not go far enough. She knew how to catch the man to be asleep and she would be awake. She needed money. She was an agent and the Philistines had promised her money and she would do everything she wanted to do so that she would not miss the money. The prize on the head of the judge of Israel. And the Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep. It's too late. It's too late, Samson. Waking up now, your strength is gone. Your power is gone. The anointing is gone. All that remains, you can shake, there's no power there. You can shout, there's no power there. You can rattle out scriptures, there's no power there. You can do whatever you did in the past. There's no power there. It is not what you say. It is the abiding spirit and power within that brings the power. He said, I will go out as at other times before and shake myself. And he wished not that the Lord was departed from him. But the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with fetters of brass and he did grind in the prison house the man became a prisoner Israel lost the warrior Israel lost their leader Israel lost the number one in the nation because the man slept at the wrong time, in the wrong place, with the wrong person, he forgot himself. Have you thought about your life? The places you go without praying before you go there. The people you contact interact with without praying before you interact with them. The people that become so easy, easy companions. And they're so, they, they know what they're looking for. And they know if they could get you, they'll get, they'll catch a big fish. And they will brag about it. You know who I got? You know who came into my net? You know the person, you, you can't guess this one. You know the person that slept with me last night? You know the person that saw my nakedness? You know the person that I had a wonderful time with this holiday period? You cannot guess. No, I cannot guess. Who is that? And then they mention, no, that cannot be true. That man, that's a warrior. It's a warrior from the church we know. That church, never. You can, I'm telling you, I got him. You know who I got? I can show you the number on my phone. I can show you the communication we have. I can show you. You know who I got? And they mentioned the person at the said, 
Ah no, don't tell me that. Don't tell me you got a lady from deep alive. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I set her, I set her up. And I set all the traps and I got her. And I'm telling you, she forgot herself. She forgot their doctrine. She forgot their Bible. She forgot all the things she used to tell me. Because I've been after her for a long time. And she said, no, I'm deep alive. I said, yeah, I'm, I'm deep alive to you. I will go with you. I'll stay with you. I will come to your church. And we're going to go to that place together. In fact, you'll take me to your pastor. You'll catch me and you win me over. They want to win you over. You are going to be lost like a senseless warrior. You do not know the price on you. You do not know the value of your life. And because of that, you will be lost. I pray you will not be lost. Am I talking to somebody there today? I said you will not be lost in Jesus' name. Look at Second First Samuel chapter 24. First Samuel chapter 24. I'm reading here from verse 2. Then Saul took 3,000 chosen men out of all Israel and went to seek David and his men upon the rocks of the wild goats. And he came to the sheepfold to sheep courts, by the way, where was a cave? And Saul went in to cover his feet. And David and his men remained in the sides of the cave. Well, the story is that Saul was after David. And Saul, Saul should have thought about what he was doing. Number one, David was not an ordinary citizen of the land. A young man that had killed a lion by himself. Fear that man. A man that had killed a bear by himself. Fear that man. A man that came out. When Goliath threatened everybody, and even Saul could not handle Goliath, and David came up and he said, I'll take him on. I'll finish him. That same God that helped me to kill the lion and the bear, this uncircumcised Philistine will be a prey. I'm going to get rid of him for the nation. And Saul saw the man it had been done. And all the women sang concerning this young man. That he had killed tens of thousands. And Saul killed only thousands. And then Saul was after the man. I think Saul himself knew a little bit. That's why it says in verse 2. Saul took 3,000 chosen men out of all Israel. And he went to seek David. He knew he was not contending with an ordinary man. But he didn't think through far enough. And so he went in to cover his feet. And when you are near an enemy warrior that has more experience than you have, much younger than you are, but he has more experience. You've never killed a lion. You've never killed a bear. You've never killed Goliath. This man has done all the three. When you are fighting a man like that, don't sleep. Watch. And so he went to sleep. And they were told, David and his men came near. Look at verse 4. And the men of David said unto him, Behold, the day of which the Lord said unto thee, Behold, I will deliver thine enemy into thine hand, that thou mayest do to him as it seems good unto thee. Then David arose and cut off the skirt of Saul's robe, 
privately. The man was asleep. And so David cut off part of the clothes to go far and to announce and to show him King Saul my father are you asleep? Abner all those warriors 3,000 people are you all asleep? I have been there David got there none of the 3,000 chosen men around Saul knew about it they were all asleep. When men sleep, the people around you, in the church, the people who should be watching, everybody sleeping. And then the enemy has come. And thank God David had the fear of God. Otherwise, he would have finished him. He would have died. Because he was not conscious of the nearness of the person he called is enemy. It tells us in verse 11. Moreover, my father, see, ye, see the skirt of thy robe in my hand. Your life was in my hand. You are a great warrior. The whole nation chose you so that you go before them to battle. You'll be the number one warrior in the land of Israel. And warrior number one, you were asleep. And your entourage and all the people around you that should be keeping watch, they were asleep. In any case, the scratch of the robe in my hand. For in that I cut off the scratch of thy robe and killed thee not. Know thou and see that there is neither evil nor transgression in mine hand. And I have not sinned against thee, yet thou huntest my soul to take it. Chapter 26. In chapter 26, we're reading from verse 4. David therefore sent out spies and understood that Saul was come in very deep. Are you that wise fighting against an enemy? Here is Saul, a great warrior. Here is Saul, the number one in the country, in the nation. He was fighting against a man. And the man he was fighting against, sharp sighted, intelligent, very wise, and vigilant. He sent out spies. Go watch him. Go see whether he's actually nearby. You see, when you're fighting against a devil that is vigilant, you're fighting against demons that are much, much experienced. They've been here in the world before you were born. And they have fought many battles and they have brought many people down. And yet, you live an easy lie. You're not watching. For this year is sunny to an end. You have not fasted one day in the whole year. You just take everything easy. You know, you open the Bibles, the Bible, and then you read a few verses a day. Praise the Lord. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, Amen. And you are out. You don't know what you are up against. But David, he sent, he sent spies out. I want you to look at verse 7. So David and Abishai came to the people by night. And behold, Saul lay... Tell me that. The next word there. I can't hear you. Sleeping. Saul lay sleeping within the trench. And his spear stuck in the ground at his bolster. But Abner and the people lay round about him. And they were all sleeping. Abner slept. All the people around him slept. And Saul himself slept. It was in the night. Ah, you say it's night. Who can be awake in the night? Well, I know one man that was awake in the night. David. 
I know one man that was awake in the night, Abishai. Those who are people, they knew, were fighting. They knew, the man is fighting. If he gets us, if he catches us asleep, it's not going to be as lenient as we have been. The man will take us off. And the anointing that Samuel had poured upon David will be forgotten. Because Saul will get rid of that David. Therefore the man was awake. Do you have an anointing upon your life? Do you have a calling upon your life? Do you have an assignment the Lord has given you? And the devil will fight it tooth and nail. And the demons will fight it tooth and nail. And you act like an ordinary person. You go about like an ordinary person. You say, you know, I'm a plain person. I'm a simple person. In fact, I can, you know, tell anybody anything in my life. I don't fear anybody. Because I love everybody. Everybody loves me. You think so? Everybody loves you. Demon possessed people love you. You think so? And those people that are that have swallowed up Satan, they love you. Everybody loves me. Everybody did not love Jesus. Judas did not love Jesus. Caiaphas did not love Jesus. All those people that wanted to crucify him, they didn't love Jesus. Even the people he had healed and the people he had delivered, not all of them didn't all love Jesus. If they didn't all love Jesus, everybody loves me. I love everybody. You think so? David was watching while Saul was asleep. You will not sleep. I said you will not sleep. That devil will not catch you. Those demons will not catch you. The anointing of God upon your life, nothing will stop it in Jesus' name. But you see this Saul now, he was asleep. And then we're told in verse 16. Verse 16, look at this. Here is David now, is talking back to them. This thing is not good that thou hast done, talking to Abner, as the Lord liveth, ye are worthy to die, because ye have not kept your master, the Lord's anointed. And now see where the king's spear is, and the cruise of water that was at his bolster. And so knew David's voice. And said, Is this thy voice, my son David? And David said, It is my voice, my Lord, O King. Well, you know the story. The point I'm making is this, that Saul slept at the wrong time. Even though he had all those soldiers around him, they slept too. Are you up to something? Do you have anything precious you should watch over? Are you empty? Do you have any treasure at all? Do you have anything important? Is there the hand of the Lord upon your life? Are you called for something serious? Are you to achieve something no other person can achieve? Don't you know the devil will be after that? Don't you know that the principalities and powers will be watching to see when you'll be careless? Things will change. You'll be away from tonight. Your anointing will increase. And nobody will make a mess of that anointing in your life in Jesus' name. Tonight, you will wake up. And when the giant wakes up, all those grasshoppers that will be crawling upon you, and they will be making a great day over you tonight, they will flee away in Jesus' name. Ephesians chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 14. Ephesians chapter 5. Reading from verse 14. Wherefore, he says, Awake, thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Are you there? I said, are you there? Christ will give you light. He will give you power. He will give you protection. 
But you have to wake up. Point number two. Warning against condemned selfish sleep. Warning against condemned selfish sleep. Look at Isaiah chapter 56. Isaiah chapter 56. What did he do from verses 10 and 11? In verse 10, is watchmen are blind. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs that cannot bark. Sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. There are many people that love sleep more than their duty. They love sleep more than their responsibility. Here are, here are watchmen. And these watchmen, they were careless. They were sleeping. And then it says, Yea, the greedy dogs, which can never have enough. And they are shepherds, they're supposed to be, that cannot understand. They, it says, they are all, they all look up to their own ways. That's the selfishness there. Everyone for his own gain, that's the selfishness from every quarter. And when you are made a watchman, and instead of watching over all that the Lord has given you to watch over, you are watching over some selfish interest, some things that are personal, and they are not part of the work the Lord has given you to do. A lot will be lost. Nahum. Nahum chapter 3. I'm reading here from verse 18. Nahum, I'm sure you know, is one of the minor prophets in the Old Testament. Get to the minor prophets and keep opening, and eventually you will get to Nahum. As you get to Nahum, we'll be looking at chapter 3. And in chapter 3, we're reading from verse 18. Nahum chapter 3 And we're reading from verse 18 It says The shepherds lumber Thy shepherds lumber O king of Assyria Thy nobles shall dwell in the dust The shepherds shall be watching over them Because they slumbered And because they were sleeping The nobles in that nation Will die and be in the dust the people is scattered upon the mountains and no man gathereth them. That's the consequence of those shepherds sleeping. And the Lord has made us watchmen. The Lord says we should watch. Ezekiel chapter 3. If you're a pastor, you're a watchman. You're a father over your children, you're a watchman. If you are a mother over your children, you are a watchman. A wife with your husband over your husband, that's a watchman right there. Husband over your wife, that's a watchman. A teacher over the students, that's a watchman. House fellowship leader over your house fellowship, that's a watchman. A pastor in the local church, that's a watchman. If the watchman is asleep and he doesn't know what is happening in the surrounding of the people he is watching over, those people are going to get into danger. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 17, son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore hear the watch at my mouth and give them warning from me. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die. Hold on now. Ezekiel, a watchman over the house of Israel. Ezekiel, a watchman over the house of Israel. God said, I have made thee a watchman. In the lifetime of Ezekiel, there might be other people that call themselves shepherds, pastors, leaders, preachers, and the Lord has not made them. 
And you see, Kel cannot sit back and say, Oh, the, the pastors are many, the shepherds are many, the watchmen are many. And since we're many, I'll do my beat and go to sleep. No, Ezekiel, you cannot check off from them. The Lord has not given them the watch. I'll make you a watchman. I have made you a watchman over the house of Israel. But he told Ezekiel in particular, at his own time, in his own period, in his own generation, he said, Ezekiel, at this time of your life, I have made you a watchman over the house of Israel. Hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. All the other people that were parading themselves, I'm shepherd, I'm this and that. The Lord said, I'm not going to give them the word. They can say whatever they want to say, but you will hear the word from my mouth. You'll give them warning from me. Somebody might be talking to you. I'll be telling you, take it easy. You're not the only one. How do you know he's not the only one? Take it easy. There are many watchmen. Where are the other watchmen? How do you know there are many watchmen? Ezekiel, get up. Wake up. Do your work. When I say, but say chief, to the wicked, thou shalt surely die. And thou givest him not warning. No speakers to warn the wicked from this wicked way to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Yet, if thou warn the wicked that he turn not from his wickedness, if you want the wicked and he turn off from his wickedness, not from the wicked or his wicked ways, he shall die in his iniquity. But thou hast delivered thy soul. Again, Ezekiel, when a righteous man does turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay stumbling blood before him, he shall die. Because thou hast not given him warning. He shall die in his sin. And his righteousness which he has done shall not be remembered. But his blood will I require at thine hand. We're looking at Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13. Reading from verse 24. Matthew 13, verse 24. Here is a parable Jesus told. Another parable put him forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. Talking about a preacher. The preach sound doctrine, good doctrine, biblical scriptural doctrine. It's talking about you. That God has given you responsibility. And thank God you are faithful to the word. Thank God you are giving out the word, only the proper word. But, look at verse 25. While men slept, his enemy came and sowed tears among the wheat and went its way while men slept while the preacher slept while the pastor slept and became at ease we taught the right word we preached the sound doctrine We've laid it line upon line. We've given them the word. We have almost read from Genesis to Revelation. And we have quoted every part of the Bible. And they know the 22 cardinal doctrines of the Bible upon which we can hang all the other interpretations. Now I can go on vacation. Now I can rest. Now I can be unconscious of duty. 
You don't want to strain yourself too much. You don't want to put so much pressure upon yourself. Of course now, you can go to sleep. While men slept. And all the other supporting people too, supporting ministers too, where, you know, every month look at the programs we have. And every year look at the programs we have. And look at our outlines and everything. Who will say we have not done enough? I, I think we need to rest a little bit now. While men slept, his enemy came and so tires among the witch. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tears also. The tears, the bad seed, will not appear immediately. You are a pastor, and you have those workers there. What should we be having workers meeting every Saturday? I think, you know, we are doing too much. The people are not babies anymore. The people are not ignorant people anymore. They don't know the scriptures. And everything they have got from all these meetings they have, you know, we have been having, they've got enough. I think I'll rest a few Saturdays. I think I'll rest a few Tuesdays and let the people carry on. You'll be surprised. The enemy is so in the test. He is not going on vacation. He is not resting. He is up and doing. And before you know about those tests, they, it will be a long time. Look at verse 27. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, did not thou sow good seed in thy field from whence then a seed tears? And he said unto them, An enemy has done this. Are there enemies of the gospel? Yes. Are there false prophets in the land? Yes. Are there false teachers in the land? Yes. Are there Jezebels in the land? Yes. Are there enemies that will spoil the field of the Lord? Yes. While men slept, they'll be at work. And he said, they said, all right, do we go there? And wilt thou, verse 28, wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, no, it's too late. You didn't discover it at the beginning. That bad literature is everywhere now. That bad idea is everywhere now. And sorcerers have come into the midst of so-called workers. And you can't tell left from right again. Familiar spirits have entered in. Among the people that are ministering to the household of faith, you can't tell right from left. Among, among the people that says we're consecrated, we're committed, we're going to work for the Lord. There is a Simon the sorcerer among them. He has left everything and is following Philip. And you cannot tell, he says he speaks the same language. He carries the same doctrine. And he carries the same label. And he publicizes himself everywhere and part of them. Approaching it now is going to take something more than you can do. That's the reason why you must not sleep. You will not sleep. I said we will not sleep. That's why we need to be awake. And we are not, we are not saying we are tired. Oh, is tired? You will not be tired. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their stress. They'll mount up with wings as eagles. They will run. They'll not be weary. Who is the person I'm talking about there? I said you'll run, you'll not be weary. You will walk and you will not faint. We cannot faint. This is not the time to faint. We must be awake. You think about Paul the Apostle. Look at the great walk he did in the province of Galatia. Galatians I'm reading from chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1. I'm reading here from verse 6. Galatians chapter 1. We're reading from verse 6. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you 
into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Paul the apostle had been with them. He had preached to them. He laid line upon line, precept upon precept. He just went away. He wasn't on vacation. He went to work in another place. Before he came back to see them, he saw something different. An enemy had come and stood tears in the midst of them, in their midst. And he said, I marvel that she are so soon. When did I leave you? When did I go to another place, to another field? So soon you are removed from him that called you to the grace of Christ, to another gospel, which is not another. But there are the some that trouble you. And would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we are an angel from heaven. Preach any of the gospel unto you. Than that which we are preached unto you. Let him be a cause. As we said before. So say I now again. If any man preach any other gospel unto you. Than that ye have received. Let him be accursed. Look at chapter 3, verse 1. O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Paul had been away from them. As he came back to them, he said, What? What am I seeing? What do I see there? Foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you, that you should not obey the truth. Before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been evidently set forth, crucified among you. And then he tells them in verse 3, Are you so foolish? Having begun in the Spirit, are ye now made perfect by the flesh? Have you suffered so many things in vain? If it be yet in vain, and he tells us in chapter 4, chapter 4, reading from verse 14. It says, And my temptation which was in my flesh, ye despised not, nor rejected, but you received me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. Paul the apostle said, I'm blown away. I'm surprised. I don't know what to say about you. You almost idolized me when I was with you. And I taught you and revealed to you the great truths of the kingdom and the mysteries of the kingdom. And you took me like an angel. You took me even as Jesus Christ. And people were accusing you. You are idolizing your pastor. You are idolizing the apostle. It's not as great as that. We also have a pastor. You had realize this man. And then Paul the apostle was surprised in verse 15. Where is then the blessedness you speak of? For I bear you record that it, if it were possible, you would have plucked out your own eyes and have given them to me. That's how you took me. How you took the watch of God. I might therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth, they zealously affect you. You know, while men slept, while Paul was away, these other people came in and they affected them, but not well. Yea, they would exclude you. They wanted to take them away from the kingdom of God that she might affect them. It says in verse 18, but it's a good thing. To be zealous, uh, zealously affected, always in a good thing. And not only when I am present with you. My little children, of whom I travel in birth again, until Christ be formed in you, I desire to be present with you now. And to change my voice. For I stand in doubt of you. The enemies have come in. I stand in doubt of you. While men slept, pollution had come in. Defilement had come in. I stand 
in doubt of you. Chapter 5, verse 7. Chapter 5, verse 7. Ye did run well. Who did hinder you? That ye should not obey the truth. This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. Enemies are coming. And it shows you if you are a pastor. It shows you if you are a leader. If you go to sleep. If you are not watching. The people you are supposed to be watching over. And you are thinking, oh they are alright. They know the truth. We have laid it line upon line for them. Nobody can confuse them. Those people, deeper light people, they know the word of God, the Bible from cover to cover. No danger at all. You think so? Have you taught them more than Paul, the apostle taught the people? Yet, when men sleep, enemies will come in. Your father, are you watching over your children? Oh, I've given them the Bible, giving them the word. I remember when they come on holidays, they will lead the devotion and they will lead the family, uh, the family uh, quiet time. You think so? Therefore, you leave them alone. Now you are asleep. Mother, are you watching over your children, over your daughters? Oh, I, I trust my daughter. You'll be surprised. When men slept, enemies came and so tears. The Lord forgive your past carelessness in Jesus' name. But from today, we shall wake up and we shall watch. You will wake up. I said you will wake up. And you will watch in Jesus' name. Point number three. Watchfulness against careless spiritual sleep. Watchfulness against careless spiritual sleep. Proverbs chapter 10 Proverbs chapter 10 I'm reading from verse 5 Proverbs chapter 10 verse 5 He that gathereth in summer Is a wise son But he that sleepeth in harvest Is a son that causeth shame This is the time of harvest the harvest is great and plenteous, but the laborers are few. And thank God, he has laid his hand upon you. Brother, sister, you are a reaper and harvester. You will not sleep at this time of harvest in Jesus' name. Jeremiah chapter 5. Jeremiah chapter 5. The Lord had a controversy with the children of Israel. In verse 24, neither say they in their hearts, let us now fear the Lord, our God, that giveth rain, both the former and the latter. In his season, he reserveth unto us the appointed weeks of the harvest. He has given us this opportunity. There's revival in our church. And you are part of that revival. All the men, all the women, all the youths, all the children. We thank God for what he's doing. It's a time of harvest that the Lord has graciously given unto us. You will not sleep at this time of harvest. You will wake up, you'll be a reaper. You'll gather in the souls. And great will be your reward in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 52 verse 1. Awake. Awake, put on the strength of Zion. Put on the beautiful garments of Jerusalem, the holy city. For henceforth there shall no more come unto thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. I was waiting for your amen there. Shake thyself from the dust. Arise and sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose thyself. From the bands of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion, you are free from tonight. In verse 3, for thus says the Lord, ye have sold yourselves for naught, and ye shall be redeemed without money. Verse 7, how beautiful upon the mountains at the feet of him 
that bringeth good tidings and publishes peace that bringeth good tidings of good things that publishes salvation that says unto Zion thy God reigneth thy watchmen shall lift up the voice we are not going to sleep again spiritual sleep has come to an edge Natural sleep, yes, at the right time, in the right place, for the right reason. But spiritual sleep, no more in Jesus' name. Thy watchmen shall lift up the voice. For the voice together shall they sing. For they shall see eye to eye. No more division, no more conflict, and no more contention among us. Eye to eye, when the Lord shall bring again Zion. And then he tells us, we have to do this now. In verse 11, it says, Depart ye, depart ye. Go ye out from thence, touch no unclean thing. Go ye out of the midst of her. Be ye clean, that bear the vessels of the Lord. Revival will come upon your soul. All the spiritual lethargies plumbering will vanish away in Jesus' name. And all you have lost at the time of sleeping, great treasures you have lost, the Lord will restore them unto every one of us in Jesus' name. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 34. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 34. Awake to righteousness. And sin not. Awake to righteousness. Let revival come. Let the power come over again. Wait on the Lord. They that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Renewal is coming to somebody right there now. Power is coming back unto you in Jesus' name. Everything you have lost, it is the day of recovery. Where are you there? I say, where are you there? Stand up and recover. Stand up and recover. Awake. Awake. The Lord is calling you. We have slept long enough. You have been on vacation long enough. You have been slumbering long enough. Look at your life. And look at the things that you have lost. And you are telling the Lord, Oh Lord, here am I. I will not sleep again. I will not slumber again. I am awake. I am awake. I want you Lord to wake me up. And everything I've lost spiritually, get it back to me. Warrior, wake up. Soldier of Christ, wake up. Believer, harvester, the reaper, wake up. And the Lord himself, he will do as he has promised and give you full restoration.